In this example, we're asked to determine if, if this collection of polynomials here is the basis for P2. Um, and that's where P2 is the collection of all polynomials of degree 2 or lower. Uh, so this was shown in a previous example, uh, a typed example in the notes, but um, P2 is the set of all uh, polynomials then of this form. So something times t squared plus something times t to the first plus a constant, where um, any of those a, b, or c could be zero. So this is polynomials up to degree two. So it's possible um, that a is zero and you have just a linear uh, expression here. But so uh, p2 is the collection of all polynomials of this form. Now, uh, Yes, the, the reason I bring that up, sorry, I got a little lost in thought there. Uh, so we could write this as the span of the polynomials uh, t squared, t, and 1. Uh, because this right here is a linear combination of uh, the vector t squared. So that's, that's an element of P2. Uh, the vector t, which is a degree 1 polynomial, so that's also a, a member of, of p2, and then just uh, the scalar 1, or really any scalar here for this last component. Um, and, and these are linearly independent. Uh, there's no way to combine, say, t and 1 to get t squared. None of these vectors are a linear combination of the other ones. Um, I bring that up just to uh, emphasize that P2 has dimension 3. So from that previous example where I went through this, uh, we know that the dimension of P2 is 3. Now there's a theorem uh, just above this example in the notes that says uh, any collection then of three vectors, we've got a, a vector space of dimension 3, any uh, collection of three vectors that is either number one, linearly independent, or number two, spans P2, then that's sufficient to say that that collection of three vectors is a basis. We only need to prove one of those two conditions that we usually focus on for a basis, the linearly independent vectors that span the set. We only need to prove one or the other. And I'm going to focus on linear independence. So I'm going to show that that collection in the example is a basis by showing uh, that that collection, uh, negative t plus 1, negative 3t squared plus 2, and 2t squared plus t is a linearly independent set. To me, that's, that's maybe the most questionable uh, fact related to this being a basis, and so I, I want to try to prove that. Uh, so linearly independent. Now to do that, we need to show that the equation where we set this up, so some scalar times the first vector, negative t plus 1, plus some scalar times the second vector, negative 3t squared plus 2, oops, there we go. Uh, plus some scalar times the third vector, 2t squared plus t is equal to 0. So those vectors are linearly independent if the only way this is true is for a, b, and c to only be 0. That's what we need to prove. Uh, so I'm going to start this out by multiplying uh, everything out here. So a times negative t, so that's negative a t, and then a times 1, so that's plus a. Now I distribute the b. So negative 3bt squared. Sorry, I can never get this written very clearly. OK. Uh, plus b times 2, so plus 2b. Uh, plus c times 2t squared. So I'm going to write that as 2ct squared. Uh, plus c times t is equal to 0. And now I'm going to collect the powers of t. So kind of collect my coefficients. So I have t squared times, all right, where are the t squared terms? So I have negative 3b t squared, and I have 2c t squared. So negative 3b plus 2c. 
Now I'm going to collect the t terms. So I have t times uh, negative a t here uh, and c t here. So I have t times negative a plus c. And then lastly, uh, my constant terms, which I'll collect in its own little parentheses here. So plus, I have positive a here, positive 2b here. So a plus 2b is equal to 0. So the only way that this sum is 0 is if each of these coefficients is 0. So I can write three equations now. Negative 3b plus 2c must equal 0 so that I have 0t squared. Also, uh, the coefficient of t must be 0, so negative a plus c equals 0. So I have 0 t's. And then the constant term a plus 2b two two must be 0. So we could solve that. That's three equations with three unknowns. We could solve that by setting up a matrix. Um, but these equations look pretty straightforward, so I'm going to see if I can solve by substitution. Uh, so first, taking this equation in red, I could move the a to the other side and arrive at uh, the conclusion c equals a. Uh, taking the third equation here, I could arrive at the conclusion that a equals negative 2b. And so putting these together, this implies that c, let me write this way, c equals a equals negative 2b. And now substituting into the first equation, so I could write this now completely in terms of b. Uh, negative 3b plus 2 times c. Well, c is equal to negative 2b. So 2 times negative 2b equals 0. So negative 3b minus 4b equals 0. So negative 7b equals 0. So b equals 0. So now we know that the, the scalar b must be 0. If we bring that over here and plug it in, then now we have c equals a equals negative 2 times b, which is 0. So a and c must also be 0. So all of the scalars have to be 0. This means that we only have the trivial solution to this equation, which means that, yes, uh, these vectors are linearly independent. And so by that theorem in our notes that says, OK, since we know we have a vector space with dimension 3, and now we know that we have three linearly independent vectors that belong to P2, then this right here must be a basis uh, for P2.